Good afternoon, Peabody Catholic. My name is Reverend Kevin Lever, STL. And I am Deacon Dennis Nakirin, STB, STL candidate. Now, you may have never heard me use the title Reverend for me before. You're used to calling me Father. Uh, yes, and but people are used to calling me Deacon, but our other title is also Reverend Mister. And at the end of my name, what's that about? STL. That's my highest level of education. I have a licentiate in sacred theology from when I studied in Rome. And similarly to myself, I obtained uh, an STB, a baccalaureate in sacred theology, and I am currently in my studies for my licentiate, to, similar to Reverend Kevin, uh, to obtain the licentiate in sacred theology. Now, that probably clears up where Rev Kev comes from, because you're used to calling me Father Kevin, but in official documents, my title would be Reverend Lever, uh, or S Reverend Mister. Uh, but why all this talk about titles? Exactly. Uh, so we use titles a lot in our society, right? We're, we're used to calling people uh, Mr., Miss, Doctor, President. Seminarian. Your, seminarian, your eminence, th things like this. But when we think about it, there's only one title that we all really want. There's one title that we all really strive for at the end of our life, and that's S.T. We all want the ST at the beginning of our name, at the end of our earthly life. And that starts here. So today, we want to talk a little bit about holiness. We want to talk about why we want to strive for holiness, why we want to strive to have that ST at the beginning of our name, and how living a sacramental life within Mother Church helps us to attain that goal. Exactly. And within the church, we speak about a lot of things. And one thing that gets brought up uh, a lot is vocation. And we talk about the different vocations similar to how Father Kevin and myself are called to the vocation of the priesthood, how people are called to the vocation of religious life, how many people are called to the holy vocation of marriage. But in speaking about vocation, we always need to talk about the first vocation that we're called to, the primary vocation, which is that vocation to become a saint. Mm -hmm. The Second Vatican Council calls it our universal call to holiness. We're all called to imitate the holiness of Christ. Just as scripture says, be holy for the Lord your God is holy. The, the point of a Christian, as you've heard me say many times uh, from the pulpit, we call ourselves Christian, little Christs. And that means we're called to imitate Christ in what we say, what we do, what we think, how we act, how we interact with others. It all starts here. So if, if we're not doing the best we can, if we're not striving to do the best we can to live a holy life now, what makes us think that we want it for eternity, for heaven? If we don't want holiness now, then, you know, what's, what's the point of living a holy life? Exactly. And in all the many things, there are many good things in this world that we try to do. All these good accomplishments, all these good goals, all these good objectives that, that we have in our life, all these good things that we want to accomplish. But, in, but at the end of the day, the biggest thing that God is going to ask us at the end of our life is, how have you been holy? How have you been faithful? How have you done my will? And these are the things that are taken into account when we want to reach heaven right. and how we want to be known at the end of the day. Do we want to be known as the person who accomplished this thing? Do we want to know be known as the person who accumulated all this wealth? Or... Do we want to be known as a saint? Do we want to be known as the person who did God's will? Right. I mean, one of the shortest descriptions of anybody we have in Scripture is of St. Joseph. Uh, when, when we start to read this story around the, the Nativity, the Annunciation, uh, it says, you know, Joseph, who was a just and righteous man. Now, we want we want be, to be called that. We want to be known as people who are just. We want to be known as people who are righteous. We want to be known as people who are holy. And there is a way to attain holiness in this earth, in this earthly life. Uh, you know, we think uh, of all the saints who have gone before us, we call upon them pretty much daily. You know, the, the preface to every Eucharistic prayer ends with some sort of you know, intonation of the saints and the angels. With all the choirs of angels, we say with one voice, and then we sing the Sanctus. Uh, but, you know, 
sometimes when we think about the saints, I think there's a tendency to think that they're the people of the past, that saints are people of medieval times or people of the last century, even though we know that there have been saints declared that, that we've lived with. And one type of category of saints that we, that we speak about a lot are martyrs. And Pope Francis has spoken how this past century, there have been more martyrs for the Christian faith than there has been throughout all of history. So we know that there are people in heaven interceding for us, all these great saints uh, that are in heaven for our behalf, interceding for us and listening to our prayers. Right. We know that to be in God's presence is to be holy. Uh, and that's what we strive for. And God helps prepare us for that life here on earth. He gives us the sacraments. He gives us his church. He gives us the first sacrament, baptism, that cleanses us of our original sin, that adopts us literally as his children into his family, the church. And then, you know, we have the sacraments, the sacrament of the Eucharist, gathering as God's people to receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Uh, when we mess up, not if we mess up, when we mess up, running to the Father's mercy in the sacrament of reconciliation, begging God for that grace. No matter how many times we fall, whether it's in the same sin or whether it's in different sins, no matter how many times trusting that God's grace is bigger than our sins, that God's grace is bigger than our human weaknesses, and continuing to confide in Him to strive for that life of holiness. Uh, so what, what Deacon Dennis and I want to talk about today is that although I don't have the power to canonize, do you have the power to canonize? Last I checked, I didn't. Okay, so neither one of us has the power to canonize anybody, meaning to make them a saint. But we all know people in our lives who we would describe as holy people. We all could look to somebody in our life and say like, that is a holy person. That is a, a man of faith. That is a woman of faith. Exactly. These people in our lives that we know that inspire us to become holier, that inspire us to become better versions of ourselves. These people that inspire us to become so much greater than, than we thought we could actually be. And, and the church, in her wisdom, doesn't declare everybody who's lived a holy life saints. She can't. We don't know how many saints there are in heaven, but there are some that are held up by the church as great examples of a holy life. For example, this coming Monday uh, is not his feast day, but this coming Monday will celebrate the 100th birthday of Saint Pope John Paul II. Who happens to be my favorite saint. Ah, that's a great segue. So the church holds up for us these holy men and women. Uh, and one thing that, for me, is very important is saints that speak to our youth. I think there's a tendency for our young people, particularly, to think that holiness is something that's for their grandparents, for their grandmas, for older people, for priests, for nuns. But God is calling all of us to be holy. From the minute we are baptized, the rest of our life is a process of striving towards sanctification, towards holiness. And whatever we can do as a church to point out to our young people, young saints or young saints in the making is something very valuable. And so these witnesses show us not only that holiness is possible in the abstract, but they show us how to be holy. They show us how we can practice holiness in our lives. And so for what Father Kevin and I want to show today are two examples of great young people who have shown us how to be holy, who have experienced holiness in their lives, and who show us what holiness can look like for a young person in this day and age. Exactly. So, um, who's going to go first? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! I'm going first. Wow. So, it's okay. You'll get your chance. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, since I won the rock, paper, scissors contest, uh, I'll speak first. So, uh, the process of becoming a saint is, is a little complicated. Uh, after somebody dies, there's a, there's a typical waiting period of five years after they die uh, before the investigation into what's called their cause can be opened. Uh, so the postulator of the cause usually has to collect evidence of this person's life, a biography of their life, uh, some affidavits from people who knew them 
that testify that they lived an extraordinary, virtuous life, that they followed the Christian commandments, that they followed the law of the church, that they were practicing their faith, that they strove for holiness. Uh, after this has happened, uh, they can be declared what's called a servant of God. After being declared a servant of God, there's a process, uh, I'm, I'm simplifying this of course, but uh, they move up to what's called venerable. After being declared venerable, uh, once a miracle has been attributed to that saint uh, and it's been investigated and, and kind of proven that it could not have happened, it, it's unexplainable by science, it's truly a miracle, then that person is declared uh, beato. Blessed. Blessed. They are beatified. And then after the beatification process, once another miracle has been attributed to this person in question, then the church has recognized that they are truly in heaven interceding for us. And so the church has, goes through the process and is able to canonize this person as a saint. And by that term canonization, we mean that the church is able to say with confidence that this person is truly in heaven and is part of the communion of saints they're witnessing for us and interceding for us. Exactly. So earlier this month, Pope Francis declared venerable uh, a, a few people, five, um, but one of them caught my eye in particular. Uh, he's a young man uh, from Italy, uh, and now we can call him venerable Matteo Farina. Uh, and Matteo, uh, caught, it caught my eye because he was 19 years old when he died, uh, and he died in 2009. He died about 11 years ago, and he's already on the road to canonization. He's already moved past servant of God and has now been declared venerable by the church. And so what, what makes this young man so special, so holy, to be declared venerable? Well, I think to start, we have, we have to look at what happened when he was nine years old. When he was nine years old, he had a dream in which uh, Saint Padre Pio spoke with him and told him that he needed to convince people that if they lived a life without sin, they would be their happiest. If they avoided sin in their life, they would be the happiest. So after that dream in which Padre Pio talked to him, Matteo wrote that he understood then that his vocation, and I'm, I'm quoting now, I hope to succeed in realizing my mission as infiltrator among young people, telling them about God. I look around me and I want to enter in young people's lives quietly like a virus, infecting them of an incurable illness, love. So when, when Matteo was 13, he started experiencing uh, some, some weird symptoms uh, and he was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, and um, during his illness, he, he just kept his faith. He kept saying, uh, you would like to scream to the world that you would do everything for your savior that you are ready to suffer for the salvation of souls, to die for him. You will have the opportunity of showing him your love. And so I think, you know, particularly that, that line he said when he was nine about being an infiltrator of young people, to show them God's love, is something that we all should be striving for. I won't call him out by name, but I think of a young person from our community who earlier this year sent me a video of him during a snowstorm writing on windshields, Jesus loves you. Just evangelizing. That's what that is. That's evangelizing. That's trying to bring the love of God to other people's lives. Even if it seems like it's in a comical way, it's evangelizing. And that's what Matteo's life was about, was pointing people to the love of Jesus Christ. And realizing, like I said in my homily the other day, that we are going to suffer in this life. But there's no suffering in this life that isn't going to be outweighed by the glory of God that we will see once we enter into eternity. And so Matteo's cause is now well on its way and we now are, are promoting it in, in some sense. Uh, so if you, if you look up the website MatteoFarina.com, which will be, I think, in the comment section, the subscribe. Dennis will make sure there's a link somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he does it, but so make sure there's a link and you can read up on, on the life of this extraordinary young man. And we can say, Venerable Matteo Farina, pray for us. And the young person I want to talk about today is Carlo Acutis. 
who is already a venerable and is going to become beatified soon uh, because there's already been a miracle attributed to him. And this miracle is the miraculous healing of a child in Brazil who had a congenital pancreas disease, which was miraculously cured one day and the doctors could not explain it. And so the people in charge of his cause for canonization have been able to properly declare this a miracle, a miracle of medicine. And because of that, we're able to move forward and be able to call Carlo in the near future a blessed. He will soon be beatified. Uh, and one thing that I like to draw from Carlo's life is similar to Matteo, Carlo was just a teenager. Right? Carlo was a kid, some would say like any other. He played video games, he was a computer programmer, he was a geek, and I can identify with that a lot. And what Carlo did is everything that he did, he ordered his life for Christ. And nothing is going to substitute for a life with Christ. And so he limited himself to playing video games only one hour a week. He limited wow. his computer time to just a, f a few hours every week. And so he would not allow these things to become a distraction for him. He wanted Christ to be the first thing in his life. And so uh, similar to Matteo, Carlo also had cancer when, when he was a teenager. He was diagnosed with leukemia which is what he died from in 2006. So he was only 16, uh, in fact, only 15 when he died. And so one thing that Carlo wanted to do is he wanted to use his gifts for Christ. He wanted to use his gifts and offer them to the church. One thing that Carlo was very attached to were Eucharistic miracles. He was fascinated by the Eucharistic miracles. These miracles that have appeared throughout history, which... God gives us to show the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. And normally during Mass, we see what still appears to be bread and wine. But at these Eucharistic miracles, something miraculous has truly happened where even the form changes. Even what looks like bread and wine changes to look like flesh and blood in these very, very limited cases, in these miraculous cases. And Carlo loved that. He loved the fact that there were these Eucharistic miracles. And he wasn't sure why people didn't know about this. And so what he did, he used his programming skills to create a website to document these Eucharistic miracles, to let the hmm. world know that Jesus Christ is present in the Eucharist. And this website became the foundation for the world exhibit on Eucharistic miracles, a website that you can find now. And I actually used this website in a presentation I once did on Eucharistic miracles. Hmm. Um, and so because of all of this, I, I love Carlo's example. I love the example that he set on using one's gifts in service to the church and in service to Christ. He could have easily played video games for hours. He could have easily distracted himself with things on the computer, with all, with all these other distractions. But instead, he used it for Christ. He used it for the church. He offered himself and his gifts for the truth. Mm -hmm. And so with this, we can wholeheartedly say, Carlo Acutis, pray for us. So soon to be blessed Carlo Acutis and uh, Venerable Matteo Farina are just two examples that are out there for us. Uh, you know, we, we hope that you know people in your life that are striving for holiness now. We hope that you are striving for holiness now. Uh, there's a, a beautiful line in the Litany of Humility. Uh, it's my favorite line in the Litany of Humility. Uh, and it, it, it prays that others may be holier than I am, provided I be as holy as I should. Which for me is the hardest line of that prayer to pray. I think that's why it's my favorite. Not because it's the hardest for you, but because it's also the hardest mm. for me. So it's often said that we don't choose our saint intercessors, they choose us. Uh, and you know, we might be inspired by somebody's story. I'm very inspired by the story of St. Maximilian Kolbe, but that means he's, he was already interceding, praying for me in heaven and, and kind of like, you know, in a sense chose me. Uh, he's not my confirmation saint. He's not uh, my baptismal name. My name is not Maximilian, but St. Maximilian Kolbe is my favorite saint. And so when I saw this story of Venerable Matteo Farina, just somehow I knew he's praying for me. 
And I, I hope to follow this story until his canonization. And Please, sim- God. And similar to me, how Pope St. John Paul II is my favorite saint. And I, I never knew much about him growing growing up. I only knew is that he was Pope uh, up until 2005 when he died. I didn't know much about his story, but then eventually when I got to seminary and then I actually started reading about his life and when I saw his canonization occur, everything just clicked and I and and his life spoke so much to me that I knew he was he was praying for me on my behalf. And that's that's when I knew that Pope John Paul II was going to be a great intercessor for me and I, and I wanted to pray for for his patronage and for his intercession in in my life and similar to how uh, Carlo spoke greatly to me as someone who one that I I identify with but also as someone who I know is praying for me in heaven and so we encourage you to to look for those saints some of which might be obscure uh, but to look look out for those same stories that speak to you and especially for those saints that might be popping up in your life and those saints that are trying to get your attention to hear their stories because by their calling out to you, they're calling you to holiness as well. And so we would like to hear from you. Please leave a comment down below and let us know what your favorite saint stories are. What are those stories and who are those saints that have spoken to you, that have caught your attention, those saints that are reaching out to you? We would love to hear your stories. Exactly. And so to kind of end the episode the way that we began, it's not really about the title that we have at the end of our name, whether, you know, we're uh, a a senior, a junior, uh, a third, a fourth. The only title that matters in the front of our name is ST. It doesn't matter if we're father, deacon, brother, sister, Mr. Miss, Your Excellency, whatever. It doesn't matter. It matters that we get the ST, that we get that degree of holiness that God wants for us. And it doesn't begin at the end of our life. It begins now. It begins today. The, the road to holiness may not be easy, but it's simple. God wants you to be holy. He wants you to be his saint. You are called to be his saint. And that's one thing we want to encourage you in. You specifically, you individually are called to be a saint. God wants you to be a saint. Exactly. So go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Venerable Mateo and soon-to-be-blessed Carlo, pray for us.